So welcome everybody to the environmental engineering seminar series. Uh, we're encouraging interactions among uh, undergraduate students, graduate students and faculty in the environmental engineering and water resources uh, programs. So I put my... And so this time around, we wanted to um, find out who we are. So this, uh, the purpose of this uh, particular seminar is to introduce ourselves to one another. And with focusing on the environmental engineering and water resources faculty. So, um, if I can advance. So here we have uh, the start of a schedule for the seminar series this semester. And so we have um, no seminar next week, right? Labor Day, no class in a week. And then um, Professor Joel Dukast will be visiting us from North Carolina State University, and he'll be giving a series of uh, talks and presentations and meetings on Thursday and Friday of that week three. And then we, in week five, we have, have a visit from a research um, researcher from the University of Minnesota, Jihan Guo. And then we're going to have a series of joint seminars with the Earth, Planetary, and Space Sciences Institute, or EPSI. And so those are going to be happening at 4 p.m. on Mondays. Um, the one, the the one in week three with Professor Joel Ducast will be on Thursday and also some meetings and seminars on Wednesday of that week. So um, our only um, environmental engineering presenter so far this term is Emily Shaw. Emily, where are you? In the back there. And Emily is a PhD candidate in environmental engineering and um, so I am, I invite other uh, graduate students and undergraduate students to give a seminar and those seminars can occupy a whole class meeting or half a class meeting. So if you're interested in giving a seminar, let me know. Um, I have invited the speakers over on the right there, um, but it's really important that we learn about what's going on in the program. So if you want to give a seminar, by all means, I'll prioritize uh, people in the, in the program to give a seminar. Any questions about the seminar? Um, a, co a couple of you have registered for it. And if you register for seminar, we ask that you give a presentation and attend all of the meetings. And we ask that you register for a seminar if you're a grad student once during your graduate degree program. Okay. All right. If there aren't any questions, then we'll go ahead and uh, begin introductions. And what I'd like to ask my wonderful colleagues to do is to stand up and either where you are or come to the front of the room and introduce yourself. Um, and also say where you got your degrees um, and what degrees. And um, if you would like the people working with you to stand up when you are speaking now, just so we start begin to get to know each other. Okay. All right. So this is really going to cover up when you're trying to move. Yeah, please. Yeah, let me try that. If you can get rid of the normal bar by pressing the accept button. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, and I can't see the button slide. All right, so uh, Audra Morse is the chair of the Department of Civil, Environmental, and Geospatial Engineering. And she informed me that she's working at home today and can't attend. 
Um, and it might look like her teaching and research uh, interests are sparse, but it's because most of her time is occupied by being department chair. Um, so that is her photo up in the upper left there. Uh, and I suspect you all know who she is and you'll be interacting with her over your program here, your degree program. And so next in alphabetically, my last name is Dr. Brian Barkdahl. Are you here, Brian? Okay, no, Brian isn't here. So I will introduce him. Uh, Brian Barkdahl is a PE, stands for Professional Engineer, and he is a professor in the department. And he teaches courses in water resources engineering, stream restoration, water and sewer systems, stormwater low impact development that uh, is also called LID and hydraulic structures. And his research is uh, erosion at bridges, sustainability and water distribution systems. Okay. And are there folks working with Dr. Barksdale here? And you are starting out. Okay, great. Welcome, Tyler. And did you raise your hand? No. Yeah, there's on a research project. Okay, you're involved in a research project, with Dr. Barco. Okay, and what is your name? I'm Brian. Okay, great. Thanks, Brian. Okay. And next up, we have Dr. Becker. That yeah, right. Hello, everyone. And I have to say, it's great to be back in the classroom and here in seminar in person. I, I missed that. And I think probably many of you have. Um, I'm an associate professor in the department. Um, in terms of a little bit of past history, I won't go through all the the boring details, but I was at the University of Maryland for about 10 years before I made a mid-career move to Michigan Tech. Um, my degrees, I'm an alum of Michigan Tech. I got my BS in environmental engineering here, one of the, the actually the first class of students to get the BS in environmental engineering. And I have my master's and PhD degrees from the University of Illinois at Urbana and Northwestern respectively. Um, here at Michigan Tech, I'm the uh, primary wastewater treatment person. So I teach uh, 4502 wastewater treatment principles and design. Um, and here's a picture. Some of you may actually be in that photo, but I uh, always enjoy taking students on a tour to, of the local wastewater treatment plant and try to, to photo document that we have a lot of fun. And then I also am one of the primary instructors for CEE 4509 environmental process and simulation. Um, and I think I have a picture in here, and then maybe uh, a couple more of you. I'm not sure if this is uh, Zach, Chloe, and Teresa. I don't know if any of you are here today. Right now, I'm also teaching uh, CEE 5502 biological treatment processes, which is actually um, a riffing on a class that I developed while on sabbatical in, in Munich. Um, and then I, in the past, I've also taught environmental engineering, CEE 3503, and CEE 1001, sustainability and engineering practice. Um, in terms of research, my program has really undergone some, some major shifts. So sort of where I got my start, my master's degree, and then my PhD, and you know, first 10, 15 years of my uh, career as a faculty member was really focusing on using microorganisms to detoxify contaminants in groundwater environments and other um, components of our environment, and especially looking at how interactions between microorganisms and microbial ecology affected our ability to, to clean up those contaminants or achieve our bioremediation goals. Um, I've also always been interested in the recovery of resources from wastewater and other waste streams, solid waste streams, and other residual materials. But increasingly, I've been focusing on, um, on understanding and improving the, inact the understanding the fate of pathogens and then improving the inactivation of those pathogens, including SARS-CoV-2 um, during wastewater treatment and in the wastewater treatment solids that are generated at the wastewater treatment plant. And a lot of this work has been done in collaboration with Dr. C. So hopefully I didn't go too long. <laughs> so 
people that you're working with you? Um, Bailey Gates is working with me right now on her master's degree, but I don't think anyone else here is who Bailey Bailey was. Pop up. Hello. So I'm a second year master's student and I'm working with kind of on the uh, COVID like water improvement and things like manhole maps of TikTok and stuff, but then I have my own research that I'm working on too. Great. Thank you, Jennifer. Dr. Becker. So who do we have now? Dr. McDonald? Thank you. So hi everybody, I'm Corey McDonald. I'm an assistant professor in the department. Um, I got my bachelor's in civil engineering at Michigan State and did both my master's and PhD here at Michigan Tech. Um, teaching, um, most of my teaching is focused on surface water. So in the fall, I teach an undergraduate course in surface water quality um, engineering. And then in the spring, graduate level course where you look at a lot of the same water quality issues but through a more quantitative lens, uh, utilizing simulation modeling. And then this semester I'm also teaching 5501 and I recognize a lot of you in here from just a few hours ago, you know that. Um, in terms of my research interests, they're also in the area of surface water quality. It's sort of a broad level, I can, I can categorize those into two general areas. The first is what I call the applied limnology. So it's sort of trying to understand what's happening within individual water bodies, um, sort of physical, chemical, biological processes that drive those ecosystems, but through sort of a management lens, that's the applied part. So generally interested in a specific water quality problem, bringing sort of logical perspective to that. And then some of my other work, um, read the little bullets you can check those for examples, it has to deal more with how those water bodies interact with their larger watershed. So what's happening on the landscape, how it affects water quality. Um, I got some specific examples there. Um, students, I don't think Kenny is back yet, um, but it's two the new master students that will be advising this semester. So Ben Bruce here, and then also Tyler will make a little tour by some of the instructors are here. So uh, next in alphabetical order is Dr. Daisuke Minakata. And Dr. Daisuke Minakata is on sabbatical this year. Uh, he's a, an associate professor in the department and he's affiliated with the departments of chemistry and physics. So oftentimes um, Dr. Minakata is teaching 5501 environmental process engineering which Dr. McDonald is teaching this semester and also 5503, physical chemical treatment processes, and 4503, water treatment. And you see his research interests there, advanced oxidation and reduction processes for PFAS, emerging contaminants in water, membrane technology for water reuse, aquatic photochemistry for beta contaminants in the natural environment, and sustainability. And so you can see photos of Dr. Minakata, Minakata um, instructing in the laboratory with his group members, I believe, research group meetings. And here is a picture he just took of himself, which shows the location of his office at AOBOG, which is the Swiss Federal Institute of Aquatic Science and Technology in uh, Dubendorf. And there he is eating a hot dog underneath some mountain, I'm not sure which one it is. It's like it might be Pilates. <laughs> so, and you have his email address there in case you want to get a hold of him. Are there uh, advisees or uh, mentees of Dr. Minakata? Yes. Great. 
great. And would you say your name one more time? Bob Benjamin. Okay, thank you. All right, so we have a Minakata representative, even though he's not with us this academic year. Uh, so I'm Judith Perlinger, and uh, I'll be coordinating the seminar series this semester. Um, so I have degrees in civil engineering from the University of Minnesota, BS and MS degrees, and a doctoral degree from the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology. And um, so I teach courses here. I say I teach 3501, but I haven't taught it for many years. Dr. Seagrin is teaching that course these days. I teach uh, sustainable engineering and the grad course, uh, which I'm teaching right now, transport and transformation of organic pollutants. I teach that one every two years. And then in the odd years, I teach the applied boundary layer meteorology course. And sometimes I teach senior design. Um, my research has to do with transport and transformation of organic pollutants and mercury. Uh, atmosphere biosphere exchange of chemicals, environmental analytical chemistry, and sustainability and resilience. And I am wondering if anyone from my circle still. I'm not really. Oh, oh. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Jesus Brad. I'm a student at the University of Okay, and Enid is also working with Dr. Urban. All right, let's see if I can figure out how to make that. There we go. Dr. Seacrest? All right, good uh, afternoon. So, uh, uh, let's see, I came here in 2010, and before that, I was at the University of Maryland College Park for 13 years. Um, so I guess now almost similar amounts of time. Uh, as Dr. Perler said, I, I teach 3501 quite a bit, or, or, or Judith does. Uh, I've taught 3503 also, Introduction to Environmental Engineering. Uh, I've been uh, helping teach Environmental Process Simulation Lab 4509 last year and this year. And then uh, alternating years, I teach solid and hazardous waste engineering 4511. I alternate that with my bioremediation engineering graduate class. And then uh, sometimes teach senior design, although I haven't done that for a while now. Uh, my areas of interest fall under the general category of environmental biotechnology. So using microorganisms to improve environmental quality. Uh, I guess when I was doing my master's degree, I really kind of started out in the wastewater field in anaerobic digestion, but then in my PhD, I got started looking on groundwater issues, particularly related to bioremediation of uh, groundwater, and specifically uh, non aqueous phase liquid contaminants and petroleum products and chlorinated solvents. And I continue to be interested in that, um, uh, though more recently uh, in the issue of how to provide amendments to stimulate uh, our mediation in the subsurface. And then when I was at the University of Maryland, I got involved with my colleague Alan Davis there with uh, stormwater, related right to uh, Brian Barkdahl's slide there on, we were focused primarily on bioretention as part of low impact development, major issue in the mid-Atlantic region. Um, and then I guess the other category I've called here bio-geo-civil. This is a lot that's been done in collaboration with geotechnical engineers. Uh, where I have two themes. One that, that I was mostly involved with at University of Maryland was, you know, working with uh, using waste, waste products as more valuable resources to, uh, in that case, you know, minimize the facility engineering practices. We were looking at using fly ash that wasn't uh, suitable for use in concrete um, as uh, absorbent material uh, to remove contaminants from, like, you know, engineer the barrier or treatment systems and then also related to wastewater more recently working with Jeff Becker on biosolids and their recycling and their packaging in biosolids and wastewater treatment and then the other one is one that's been really of interest to me is uh, using microorganisms to modify the engineering properties of soils uh, here's a 
uh, scanning electron micrograph of uh, one project where we were looking at uh, using uh, bacteria to change the properties and create a situation where calcium carbonate precipitation occurs. And here we were precipitating calcium carbonate and cement uh, sand particles together and create a, a solidified material that improved engineering properties. And more recently, we've been working with mining daily compounds and that kind of a different biomediated processes to reduce air emissions. So I think we're over time. Thanks. <laughs> There's nobody on campus right now that's working. That's what we're doing. Well, that's what I look like without a mask, huh? <laughs> or did anyway. Anyway, going through the same routine as the others, you know, my, what I'm teaching are 3502 and 4501. And many of you have taken those courses and know that, that they all have lab components because I particularly enjoy hands on teaching and learning. As a, as a way of uh, more effectively learning the material. Um, on the graduate level and upper undergraduate level, I offer two courses in biogeochemistry, which we'll talk more about. And right at the moment, I'm also teaching a scene design section. My research in general is deals with surface water quality or biogeochemistry, you know, the cycling of materials within systems, whether it's large lakes, small lakes, wetlands. Um, I've done a lot of work locally with mining, remediating some of those legacies. And more recently, trying to study how do we solve some of these big intractable problems? You know, the individual research is very fun and very gratifying, but it doesn't lead to um, large scale solutions to problems. Those require sitting down with the people involved, all the various stakeholder groups, um, understanding their viewpoints and allowing them to participate in formulating those solutions. Um, and educating them to the, what, where we have expertise, but also learning from them. And one of the exciting things going on now is the proposal that Dr. Perlinger is leading, where we'll soon implement a, an education program in the department to train students to do that, to be more effective at solving these very complex environmental problems. Working with me, and um, Shaw is already helping up, and he and Radhika are both in the back. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks, good afternoon, everybody. Um, Oh, first, uh, where did I get my degrees? I uh, studied, um, got my bachelor's in civil engineering and uh, engineering and public policy from Washington University in St. Louis. And then I went to University of Texas for a master's in environmental engineering and a PhD in civil uh, water resources engineering. Uh, I, just, I just listed my graduate courses here and a couple um, programs I'm involved in. Um, it kind of spans my interest really, uh, water resources, engineering, planning and management. Um, optimization methods, which, you know, we might in modern parlance say is uh, kind of on the edge of data science, algorithms for decision making. Um, and then uh, I'm involved in some uh, humanitarian engineering programs on campus. And so I'm teaching a course right now called Engineering with Developing Communities. Um, and we also want to highlight a, a water sanitation and health uh, graduate certificate. Um, actually, Dr. Becker proposed that and several of us faculty are engaged in that. And then um, I can be a contact, a faculty advisor for engineers without borders. In that, working on some projects internationally. Um, I, these are my current research projects, which maybe look like they're kind of all over the place. There is a theme, I think, and it's um, sort of doing integrated systems analysis or integrated modeling uh, within the food, energy, water nexus. So we have a project where we're tracking household consumption. We have about 150 households involved in the Chicago area. 
um, tracking their consumption and giving them feedback on the impacts of that, the food, energy, and water consumption in the household. Uh, another project on campus is uh, looking at use of abandoned mines for pumped energy stores to have in the water energy nexus. Um, and I think it's Dr. Dyerson here. <laughs> so she's working on that um, in mechanical engineering. And also um, uh, Dr. Dye in civil engineering is part of that team. Um, I'll mention Dr. Minicata is part of our food, energy, water nexus project also. And then another project, um, I haven't been too engaged in this yet, I think I'll become more engaged in the next year, is an international research experience for students in El Salvador. And uh, that's led by uh, Dr. John Gerke, and also the, we have a couple of faculty of social sciences who are part of that team. Um, another project that was mentioned, mon monitoring COVID, or should be SARS-CoV-2 virus in wastewater. And we have a little add on to that where we're, we're modeling the wastewater systems. And Bailey is helping with that, and um, Susie Toivinen is helping with that project this semester also. Um, and then one project, sorry, Brian, that didn't get on here, a little side project for mod modeling uh, intermittent water systems, setting up a pipe network in the lab. And Brian's helping with that. Um, thank you. Great, thanks. Thank you for mentioning the, the Washington certificate. I hope people are aware of these certificates and, and trying to uh, take courses so that you can and you can earn those in addition to the degree. Great, thanks. Dr. Webster. Really an impact in the back. Okay. I'm gonna try to stand in the middle too. I talked to all you guys. Stand this way. I'm going to try to be more open. Okay, um, I'm Dr. Webster. Um, taught three classes today, so I'm still catching my breath here in a minute. Uh, I listed uh, courses that I've taught more recently, maybe within the past four years, but I've taught um, four or five courses beyond that in my time at Tech. I came here in uh, 2006. Six. And before that, I got my undergraduate degree, a Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering at the University of Vermont. I have a Master's and a PhD, both in Civil Engineering and both from Cornell. Um, in terms of teaching, it's primarily focused on water resources engineering, hydrology. Um, I did also teach environmental engineering. Uh, and then uh, a number of other courses that include a lot of uh, probabilistic modeling. Um, so that being said, I kept my, my research interest or uh, what I'm doing for research kind of limited because it really encompasses uh, probabilistic modeling applied to primarily surface water. Um, and so keeping that in mind, I, I do a lot looking at hydrologic extremes. More often thinking about annual maximum flow events um, and associated risk of flooding. Uh, but I have also done things with precipitation. And um, I don't think I put this on here, but I've also applied probabilistic modeling to water quality. Because uh, a lot of the, the statistics and methods that you use are the same. So really just applied to different sets of data. And then a lot of what I've been doing also looks into impacts of climate change and land use. And so one of my real key interests is trying to think about how we can uh, project flood risk for given locations that would be over time frames that would be useful for engineering design. So thinking about how to predict things far enough into the future based on what we know today, so that when we're designing something, thinking about it, climate change is uh, amplifying the intensity of things or land use changes are amplifying the intensity of things, will that structure still withstand things for years to come really over its design life? I think, I think that's good, sorry. <laughs> and uh, nobody uh, is here today who's working. Thank you, Dr. 
So, uh, Dr. Wu, are you here? Yeah? Okay. So, Dr. Xilian Wu, Xilian Wu is a professor in the Geological and Mining Engineering and Sciences Department and in our department, Civil, Environmental, and Geospatial Engineering. And his focus is really on atmospheric science. So he teaches in our program, our undergrad environmental engineering program, a course on water quality, uh, air quality engineering, 4504. And then he also teaches uh, a course in mine ventilation engineering and also global environmental change. And his research area has to do with transport uh, and transformation of chemicals in, in the air. Um, and he uses numerical modeling uh, quite a bit in this. Um, I'm thinking this might be mercury that he's plotted here, uh, global mercury concentration. Can't be sure, but I believe so. Um, <laughs> Geos count. My colleagues want to add things about Dr. Wu. He's <laughs> not here. So, okay. All right. And then someone else who is not here. Dr. Peng Fei Xu is also on sabbatical along with Dr. Minakata. I am not sure where he is. I think he's located somewhere in the Eastern US, but I'm not sure. And uh, Dr. Xu is a, an associate professor in the department. He's also director of the Numerical Geophysical Fluid Dynamics Laboratory in the GLRC here. And he's teaching graduate level courses. You can see the list there, uh, which I have from the department's webpage. Um, and his research has to do with hydrodynamic modeling. Um, and climate modeling and the coupling between the ocean and the atmosphere. Uh, also working on data assimilation and machine learning, learning, biophysical processes in our Great Lakes here and estuary and coastal ocean processes. Any advices of our mentors of Dr. Xu? Uh, hi, my name is Ara. Uh, Working on uh, development of operational forecasting at the Great Lakes, where we have the two. And prior to that, I was uh, for six years back, I worked in Namibia and my home country, uh, doing uh, also numerical modeling stuff with the Bureau of Meteorology there. And I had a spell in Patrick at Dartmouth for my master's, working on a linear resource assessment and also environmental impact evaluation. And then part of that, I, was, uh, I did my bachelor in Indonesia and also I had to spell uh, for master's degree in Germany. Thank you so much. All right, so, and you have uh, Dr. Hugh's email address for us. All right, so we are, we have plenty of time. Um, any questions, comments? Yeah, we could do that. Why don't we start from the back? And if you haven't introduced yourself, go ahead and, and speak. That's you. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Hi, everyone. So I'm Sam. Uh, I'm here for a master's in natural engineering. I've done that with that in Italy. Welcome. Um, yep, please. I would like to start talking a little bit 
And your name is? Okay. Jose. Last semester, uh, I was advised by the company uh, of the senior to take some uh, sabbatical for the year. So now I'm just looking for another uh, advisor to work with, and my interest will be uh, sustainability, uh, salt water, and instead of waterfall. Thank you. Thank you. And then we, Ben Rice, we got introduced, right? Yeah. Uh, I like to tell this year, I guess for the first year, especially in nursing, I graduated from Tech Boxes. You are also TAing for? Oh, yeah. So I TAed for 4501 and 4505. Okay. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Tiara. Um, this is my first semester as a master's student. I'm on the accelerated master's program, um, so I was going to my bachelor's degree in environmental engineering from Michigan Tech this past two spring. And my advisor is Dr. Bennett Thank you. Um, I'm Cliff Navin. I'm also a culinary master in environmental engineering. I'm doing the coursework option. So I'm doing research and advisor Thank you. Hi everybody, my name is Amanda Creel. I'm a fan of you guys. <laughs> so I am an accelerated master student in environmental engineering. Uh, my advisor is Matt Urban and I'm interested in air quality and mitigation. So I'm doing the course for option. Thank you. Hey, I'm Brian. Uh, Brian uh, so I am a water resources uh, engineering graduate student uh, studying with Dr. Watkins, uh, doing a project on intermittent water systems, basically just building a model of water distribution system in lab 106 there. So you see a bunch of pipes, like uh, stuff all over, but our stuff is part of our project. So uh, come on down and Say hi and uh, see you around. All right, and Brian, you are coordinating the Right D program, oh, yeah. is that right? Uh, yeah, I'm also in charge of Right D, so I believe I spammed all your emails for uh, <laughs> attendance, but uh, I will be uh, sending out another email and scheduling that uh, either this week or next week. But basically, Right D is just a program to kind of help us, uh, kind of a support system for uh, all the research writing endeavors. Uh, we have some guest speakers, uh, snacks, and uh, camaraderie. Great. Great. Thank you for coordinating the right program. And yes, Dr. Ducas will be speaking for a bit to that group as well. Yes, September 15th. Are we set, Tyler? Um, would you like me to? I would, yes. Okay. Thank yes, you. Yeah. Time. <laughs> Hello to those who haven't met me. I'm Tyler. Thank you. Um, I'm starting my master's. And I'm working with Dr. McDonald and Dr. Barkal. Um, so, tentatively, hopefully, the project will be related to one resilient to see in different design methodologies for fish at this poll. That's a and you know, but yeah, I'll be around. Come back. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, so my name is Nate Benjamin. I'm a PhD student in Robert Engineering. I'm working on the Shira BI project in engineering fundamental. I was working on the research. Welcome. Uh, hello, I'm Dominic. I'm a first year master's student in environmental engineering from 
it's not service for our quality. I'm doing coursework as well, but I will be interested in research. I'm still very about it. Welcome. Okay. Well, yes, please. I should I am a lot of work on the of the of the so what I neglected to say when we walked in this room is where we're, how we're supposed to exit if there's an emergency. So I will try and remember to do that each week, I think. So if there is an emergency, like we hear the fire alarm go off, we need to exit through the stairwell, not the elevator. So those uh, stairs are just to the left and then to the right. Uh, go down to the first floor, proceed out the double doors out the front. And let's go to the left and meet down in front of the M&M building. Let's not try and take the Dow elevator up onto campus. Okay. All right. So Dr. Seacrin, you do something where you accept um, records for professional development credit. Yeah, you do about that. <laughs> well, uh, people in uh, Michigan who have a professional engineering license are required to uh, do uh, paying education and meet the requirements every year. And so, if anyone has a professional engineering license, uh, uh, I'll be you know, I'm happy to help you with that. You'll get documentation for when you have seminars on engineering topics, but then you can do uh, documentation for your records. So uh usually I came to seminar I'll say if you want because we're back in person, I guess I'll just be doing it person for documentation and see me out here and also on board for the same thing. Please take advantage of that. That'd be good for you. Great, thank you. All right. I think we're all set. So don't come back here Monday next week, right? <laughs> and then the, the following week. We'll have our uh, environmental engineering disciplinary seminar on Thursday at four. Okay, so not Monday. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.